morning for you, I don't know, but it's morning for me for about 30 more minutes. So today I'm going to be speaking about a certain question which I got, somebody asked me, and they came with me, came to me with two materials and they said that which one would be better for high power uh, piezoelectric devices, which one has better high power properties. And I'm going to be answering that question using these two piezoelectric materials. They're different, different compositions. And uh, these are not the ones that the person was asking about, but I'm just showing the general trend here. What we see in front of us is an LCR meter. And what we know from an LCR meter, we can see in this corner the maximum voltage applied, uh, sort of, uh, is one volt. And that's not really high power performance considering off resonance measurements. Uh, so basically what I'm going to be talking about here is the concept that you can analyze and understand the high power behavior of piezoelectric materials using their low power properties. You can sort of predict and already understand what's going to be happening. So using this LCR meter, I'm going to be determining the low power properties of these two materials and I'm going to be drawing conclusions about the high power properties. So here's an LCR meter. What we're going to be doing here, you see these two uh, clips here, they're the uh, input output. Uh, we have this sort of holder, which, I'm, which is going to be placed at the top of this uh, convenience. And we have these two samples here. And one thing to note about piezoelectric materials, namely PZT, is that if you have a lighter colored PZT, I'm not talking about the electrodes, which will always be usually silver colored, uh, but, the, but the inside, the sort of meat of it, this is a dark colored one, which means it's a harder material, which is better for high power applications. However, this is a low uh, power material, which is better for high electric field off resonance measurements, sort of. So this is usually has higher properties, uh, the lighter kind, but larger losses. This usually has uh, lower losses, but, high, uh, and, but lower properties as well. Uh, such as the piezoelectric D coefficient. Uh, it'll be lower in this darker material than this one. However, this one will have lower losses. And in different applications, that can be uh, very important to know. So how are we going to be using this? Right now, the I'm going to be initiating an open circuit condition. Uh, we have some wires, so might as well just calibrate it. So we're calibrating it. This is an LCR meter again. You could be using an impedance analyzer for this test, but this is the most simple instrument to demonstrate it on, there's only a certain amount of frequencies, only about 10 frequencies we can uh, apply. So now we ha I'll, I'm going to be shorting these electrodes at the top, so I'll short it. Error, that's okay. Um, what are you going to do? Short. Eh, whatever. As long as we have a... Okay, it's not shorted, actually. There. Okay, that's short. Anyways, such is life. It doesn't always work. But this is 7 ohms at 7 megahertz. But at 10, it's about 3 ohms. It'll be okay. Anyways, not perfectly calibrated right now, but that's fine. So we're going to take this darker material we're going to place it here and the resonance frequency of these are probably going to be around 110 kilohertz so what we're going to be noting here, I'm going to be writing these numbers down this is the impedance at 10 kilohertz so 10 kilohertz is significantly lower than the resonance frequency and this is what we want to use to measure the off resonance properties so we, can, we have the uh, impedance of 5.4 kilo ohms at 10 kilohertz and a phase angle of negative 89.92. Uh, you can convert this 90 degrees minus, uh, you add this, the difference, which is about 0 0.8, 0 0.08, that will be degrees, you can convert that to radians, and that's the dielectric loss. However, to get this uh, number into capacitance, you can, uh, you know, the capacitance is equal to one times the frequency uh, times the capacitance, you can find that online. The, uh, the impedance is equal to one over the frequency, uh, the uh, the uh, angular frequency times the capacitance, uh, and that's that way you can get the capacitance from this value. 
or you can just press the capacitance button since this is an LCR meter. So I'm going to be writing this down on the side. For the dark material, I'm just going to call it D. Uh, the capacitance is equal to 2.923 nanofarads, and the dielectric loss is going to be equal to 0 0.015. Okay, dielectric loss is not A, it just has no units. So those are the two numbers here. Now we're going to be looking at the other material, which is going to be having different properties. Okay, I'll put that in there. Alright, we see, very interesting, the lighter material is going to have a capacitance almost twice as large at 4.9. The other one was 2.9, 4.96 nanofarads, and the dielectric loss of this one is going to be equal to 0 0.0174 okay um, the other one was 0 0.015 right so let's check the other one this one the darker colored one was sorry 0 0.015 so this is actually 0 so this di the dielectric loss of the lighter one was 10 times larger so let's take a look here this is all being done at 10 kilohertz. So look, the darker material has a much lower capacitance, and, in the, and the lighter material has a larger capacitance, and the dielectric constant of the lighter material is 10 times larger, approximately, than the dielectric, con the dielectric loss of the uh, darker material. So what does this tell us? It tells us a lot of very interesting things. It tells us all we need to know initially, at least, about the high power properties of the material. So we're continuing. So let's take a look again, and now at the equivalent circuit of a piezoelectric material in off-resonance conditions. The, we know the piezoelectric material behaves like a capacitor, uh, but these capacitances can be uh, converted both into what we can call motional capacitance or uh, clamped or damped capacitance here. This capacitance is, e is proportional to the permittivity under constant strain, while this one deals with the uh, displacement or the deformation which occurs due to an application of applied electric field, which is going to be related to d squared over the elastic compliance under constant electric, divided by the constant uh, elastic compliance under constant electric field. So you can imagine, and this also has a loss tangent. The one that we just measured, this is an effective loss tangent here. Okay. But these two also have loss tangents. So this is going to be tangent delta non-prime. So this is sort of a notation which, which is not completely standard, but sort of standard. This is a prime, this is non-prime. Prime means the free capacitance, non-prime means just the clamp capacitance. And this one is going to be related to the piezoelectric losses which we which are more complicated. It's going to be related to let's say let's make it really simple. Let's just say it's equal to the mechanical loss, which is proportional to the mechanical quality factor, which is has to do with the elastic properties. In high power uh, resonance type applications, elastic properties are the most important. The loss prop the elastic loss properties are the most important consideration because we have large vibration, we have large stress but we don't necessarily have large electric field applied, therefore we have m much more elastic energy stored than dielectric energy stored, therefore we're sort of, we sort of want to lean toward losses, of el elastic losses that is. So, we can understand then that this property is equal to the elastic compliant, uh, the permittivity under constant stress, because we're not applying any stress, therefore the stress is zero, therefore it's constant stress. So, we have this relationship here that the permittivity under constant stress is equal to the permittivity under constant strain plus d squared over se and this is generally understood from this these two equivalencies so now i'm going to ask the question here out of the darker material and the lighter material which one of these materials has a larger which one of these materials Okay, it's falling over, not the best. Okay. Which one of these materials has a larger piezoelectric D coefficient? Okay, let me tell you, it's the lighter material. Because the capacitance here is 
directly related, obviously, you know, through the, you know, primitivity with the, the dielectric, uh, you know, free air capacitor, whatever. So basically, the clamp capacitance is relatively similar for hard and soft piezoelectric ceramics, meaning uh, low power and high power type piezoelectric ceramics. But the D coefficient, actually, this is the real differentiating coefficient for high power and low power materials. Uh, because the capacitance is larger in the lighter material, therefore this permittivity will be proportionally larger. And that contribution, much of it comes from the piezoelectric D coefficient here. So for this material, likely, the lighter material, likely the D coefficient is equal to 800 Mm, probably around 400 actually, 400 pico coulombs per newton, and for the this is for the lighter material. For the darker material, the d coefficient is probably going to be around 100. Uh, it's probably going to be around 200 pico coulombs per newton. So this is why these the capacities are different because the piezoelectric D coefficients are different. So basically, if you measure a piezoelectric material with a larger permittivity, you could probably be certain, if, assuming it's the same base composition like PZT, that the one with the higher permittivity has a larger D coefficient. So that's the first thing. We, we talked about the D coefficient. The second thing I want to speak about is the loss mechanisms. We see that this material, the darker material, has 10 times less loss as a lighter material. We, we said that here, you can, you can basically think that uh, the losses, this loss is related to tangent delta prime, right? And assuming that the clamp permittivity losses don't change, which would be tangent delta non prime, the losses then would be coming from this elastic coefficient right here, this, this elastic coefficient. So, Essentially, the tangent delta prime, which is the, f the one we're measuring here, is actually proportional to the tangent phi, which is the elastic loss, which is uh, proportional to 1 over the quality factor, which is the magnification of displacement and resonance conditions. Uh, so basically, because uh, these are related together, you know, the permittivity is related to the elastic properties and the, basically the capacitance is then equal to elastic and electromechanical transducing transducer qualities in the piezoelectric charge coefficient. Then we also have the piezoelectric loss, or sorry, the dielectric loss is related, is pretty well scales linearly. You know, if you have a larger dielectric loss, you're going to have a larger let's say this is called this delta and this is called this phi. If you have a larger dielectric loss, you're going to have larger uh, elastic losses. This is usually because they're correlated. One depends on the other. Okay, so therefore this loss would be less. We can, we can, then we can determine uh, the properties. Uh, we can basically say that this darker material has less elastic loss than the lighter material because generally the dielectric loss and the elastic loss both scale together, but they're not completely related. But there's some there's some factor which they can be related by. So again, uh, this darker material has a much better elastic lower elastic loss than this lighter material, and in resonance conditions, the displacement, let's call it U, is proportional to the quality factor, which is one over the elastic loss. Uh, multiplied by the voltage you're applying. So basically in the resonance condition, which is the high power condition we're speaking about, losses matter a lot. They're proportional. So this darker material will have 10 times larger loss. So because of the D coefficient, the lighter material had twice as much displacement in off resonance. So the lighter material is better in off resonance. However, in the resonance condition, losses matter a lot because losses cause heat generation, uh, lower losses, and will result in less temperature rise. Well, also, very importantly, lower losses result in magnification of the, of the displacement, as I mentioned in other lectures. So this quality factor is sort of inversely related, you could say, to um, this uh, tangent delta term. So we can understand now that this darker material is a better high power material. 
However, the lighter material has a higher fuel electric D coefficient. So if we're looking for off resonance displacement, which would be proportional to the D coefficient, then we would be interested in this lighter material. However, if we're looking at resonance type displacement, where the quality factor, which is related inversely to the loss, to dielectric loss, uh, is the main parameter of interest, then we'd be looking at the darker material as the material of choice. And generally what happens, as you increase your vibration level, so let's just call this the quality factor, and let's just call this vibration level, what basically happens generally with PZT materials is that the quality factor decreases uh, with increasing vibration and velocity. So although maybe for a design perspective you may want to know what what a vibration velocity you're operating your device at, and therefore what quality factor you would expect, you want to directly measure that. But however, not everyone has this capability, these measurement uh, setups. So if you want to get a general idea, you look at these initial loss parameters, and you look at this uh, capacitance. Usually for a higher capacitance PZT material, or meaning higher permittivity, you're going to have larger D coefficient. Larger D coefficient sort of means that the domain walls in the material are more movable, and because the domain walls are causing losses, that will also cause uh, a poor high power behavior but a better off resonance uh, application of electric field. So I hope this solved the, the question which one of these materials is better at low power? Clearly this one. However, I mean better at high power? Clearly this one. Uh, this one probably very surely you can say that it has a higher D coefficient because of higher capacitance because of the exact same geometry we can directly correlate uh, the permittivities of, of each of these. So I think, we, and so this is better, this has a higher D coefficient, lower D coefficient. Lower loss, better offer, high, uh, better resonance measurements, better resonance, re resonance application. High, uh, higher loss, worse resonance application, but higher bandwidth, that's something else. Uh, so this is a high power material, low power uh, material, resonance application, off resonance application. So finally, if we want to know just really, really quickly which, which material is better, and I'm going to give like a general, uh, I'll just leave it like that, and we have this material, who care, we don't know what it is, right? How do we tell what kind of material it is? And, and, and in general, low power materials are soft, and high power materials are called hard PZT. So this material, I just put it in, the loss value is 0 0.026. So this number is dependent on the geometry, but this loss value is very interesting. It's not dependent on geometry. So you can quickly see 0 0.0026. Let's take it in comparison to our other materials. This is 0 0.0015, 0 0.0174. So because this random material that I just put in has loss properties just twice, as, about just a little bit twice more than the uh, tangent delta term of the hard of this hard high power material. Hard means high power usually. Soft means low power. Uh, that's another discussion. I may have gone into it, but we can clearly tell 0.026 is that material. Uh, it's closer to the high power regime. It's closer to this property. So generally, you can uh, tell that this is a high power material because its loss is low. Uh, Usually when you get the double digit, two zeros, and then the loss factor comes, it's a high power material. If you have a single zero, and then, and then, the, you know, then the digit comes, it's a low power. And this one would be high power. I don't know if that's what I said, but you kind of understand what I mean. Okay, thanks for watching. Today we understood the difference between a, how we can tell and understand a high power and low power material uh, from low power properties and how those sort of correlate to uh, how elastic losses correlate to dielectric losses. And uh, hopefully this would be good information for anyone wanting to understand these properties and get an idea before you do heavy testing, high power testing, uh, and whatnot. Thanks for watching.